Hello, it's a pleasure to be here with Christophe Tiremsian from RFI. For this interview, we are on the Gustave Ruber boat of the Vedette Company of Paris. Marie-Amélie Le Fur is with us. She's the president of the French Paralympic and Sports Committee. Hello, Marie-Amélie. Hi. We're exactly one year away from the opening ceremony of the Paralympic Games, the first to be organized in France after such a career, a career like yours. Nine medals at the Paralympic Games. What does this represent for you personally, this first edition of the Paralympic Games in France? For me, it's a golden opportunity. It's also a golden opportunity for all French athletes. I believe that every top-level athlete dreams of one day competing in games hosted by their own country. There's going to be tremendous excitement. It's always a special atmosphere when you play at home, and this will be true for the 300 athletes who will make up the Paralympic delegation next year. And we also hope that the French team will make the most of their home advantage so it can hoist itself on more podiums, secure more medals, hopefully harvest more gold and raise the profile of the Paralympic movement. So much for boosting the performance of the French team. But let's remember that the Paralympic Games are about so much more. The ability to raise the bar for all people with disabilities, the Paralympic Games help to promote and facilitate access to sport for PWDs. In France, access is still extremely limited. More generally, we have uh, an opportunity to bring to the forefront societal issues pertaining to handicap accessibility, the need to improve living conditions and transport arrangements and employability for persons with disabilities. The Paralympic Games will serve as a catalyst for these issues, and we hope the Games will have a transformational impact on France. You've participated in uh, four Paralympic uh, competitions. 2012 in London is the example that Paris will have to follow next year for you? It is indeed an extraordinary showcase. The British public took a very different view on athletic performance and on passion in arenas. This was new to us. And we hope to see the same passion from volunteers and the public in the 2024 Paris Games. Already there are strong indicators that Paris 2024 will go down in the history of the Games. It is the very first time that the same icon is being used for the Olympic and Paralympic Games. The concepts and fields of play are identical. Such key innovations are steps in the right direction. And we have a unified team representing the entire country since Tokyo. Olympic and Paralympic athletes use the same methods of communication. For the first time ever, the same celebration areas are being used for the entire French team. It's a unique form for them to meet the general public. The Games will have a huge transformational impact on the nation as a whole and, more generally, for the entire athlete experience worldwide. So we're going to talk a bit about the organization next year and common issues for the Olympic Games, but there are also specific issues, for instance, uh, transportation. We know that public transportation in Paris is not accessible, We, especially for PWDs. Will there be enough alternatives, for instance, uh, specific vehicles that will allow these people, athletes, and the audience to be able to move around in the best possible conditions? Regarding accessibility, there are two issues. During the Paralympic Games, the most important traffic flows will be the athletes themselves. We need to ensure that the best possible transport experience is given to our delegations, which may include many wheelchair athletes competing in team sports. As the transfer between the airport, the village, and the competition venues, all those arrangements are secured via the organizing committee. A number of test events will help us improve mobility solutions. And the other key flows include spectators with disabilities, and these flows will peak during the Olympics, which account for the highest ticket sales. And much has been done with the French government, OCOG, the Paralympic Committee, and the prefectures via the Mobility Committee to ensure safe travel times with dedicated shuttle service for disabled ticket holders. OCOG has also introduced a number of key innovations to enhance the spectator experience for people with disabilities, whatever the type of disability. And the idea is to renew our standards so that once the games are over, spectators with disabilities who have come to enjoy a sporting event can take home this completely unprecedented experience. 
know so much regarding accessibility during games time. And we're also working on more permanent amenities, uh, making sure more transit stations are made handicap accessible. Cab licenses now include an accessibility training requirement, and the goal is to have a thousand new disability-friendly cabs. It's too bad it didn't go further, but there is a general awareness of the lack of accessibility in Paris, in France, whether in terms of transport, accommodation, or public areas. And we may need a longer-term plan to make our country more accessible. So, Marie-Amélie, you've just talked about it. There's the issue of transportation, but also the issue of accommodations. Important efforts still need to be made. What is the French state doing for accommodations, both for athletes and for the audience? We're talking about 350,000 people. Regarding athletes' accommodation, there is zero concern. The village has been designed to be universally accessible. And in terms of legacy, Saint-Saint-Denis will emerge as a brand new district with truly innovative accessibility infrastructure and environmental benefits. So again, zero concern regarding delegations. Regarding accommodation for spectators with disabilities, this is a key priority for for the ministry in charge. And Minister Olivier Grégoire has taken point on this front to ensure that rooms are accessible to people with disabilities. Like I said, there's only one year left to games time, so a radical overhaul is impossible, but improvements can be made. Are we running late for accommodations? I don't know whether we're running late, but we still have one year left to get the job done. And Paris is one of the world's most popular tourist destinations, and the welcome given to disabled tourists need to be improved over time. This kind of agenda must extend beyond the Paralympic Games. Last July, there was the World Championship of Parathletics uh, in Charity in Paris. That was a first test, uh, a pilot program for logistics, especially for para-athletes. What, according to you, worked well and what needs improvement? Well, clearly, one thing was missing during the Parathletics World Championships in order to truly transform the spectator experience, but also to generate greater media interest. We would have needed more medals. Fortunately, France won very few medals. Uh, to be successful, the French team team needs to work on attracting the audience and creating a buzz among the French audience. That's one thing we wish we'd done better, capitalizing on this major event, which is second only to the Paralympics. It was an opportunity to forge a connection between the people of France and the Paralympic movement. Unfortunately, the French delegation failed to secure enough medals. So tickets will be available on the 9th of October. How many tickets will be available and what kind of audience do you expect will it be the same audience as for the Olympic Games and what is going to be the fill rate? Around 3 million tickets will be on sale for the Paralympic Games. Clearly, we're targeting a domestic audience, we're catering to French families. Our challenge is to remind French people of what the Paralympic Games are all about. It's a high-level competition with amazing athletes, with incredible life journeys and amazing sporting abilities. Virtually the same locations will be used for the Olympics and the Paralympics, and they're beautiful. The Papa Grand Palais, the Chateau de Versailles for the equestrian events, the de Mars for blind football events. Those are extraordinary venues to showcase sports that are a little different. The athletes are different because of their disabilities, but they embody everything the French love about sports. As fans, we support our national teams. We're patriots as far as that's concerned. Victory, dedication, going the extra mile are some of the sporting emotions that are dear to the hearts of the French, emotions that are readily expressed during the Paralympic Games. And we need to keep this narrative going for a year because the public is much less familiar with Paralympic sports and athletes than with the able-bodied kind. This is a, a part of the things you're work, going to be working on in the next 12 months to uh, bring these athletes to uh, the forefront? French people should be able to recognize some of our faces. This summer, a number of athletes won a bunch of medals, which turned them into standing bearers. Some names come to mind, Alexandre Léoté, the cyclist, and Alex Portal, the swimmer, both won medals in cycling and swimming. 
cyclisme et, et la so natation. We euh, et need on a besoin de cette headliners to engage the public. De connaître un nom, de connaître Knowing the names of athletes, recognizing their faces is reassuring. That's what sells tickets. So let's continue the current media work to promote the French team and their beautiful faces. We also think about athletes like Timothée Adolphe, who's multifaceted. He does one-man shows, he does music, rap, and of course, he's a great swimmer. Populaire et sportif qu'on attend, il y a évidemment l'héritage. In terms of successes, we also expect a legacy. Do you regret sometimes that some equipments are not going to be sustainable? They're being set up only for the Paralympic Games, but uh, they're not going to stay in place for the years to come. Yeah. When it comes to organizing the competition, a number of buildings and facilities are temporary. But the government has invested heavily in renovating and building sports communities in parallel with the Games to promote access to sport, to enable the French team to prepare for the Games. And that is a tangible and material legacy for French sports. And the 2024 Games are an opportunity to break ground on new revolutionary facilities in terms of handicap accessibility. PRISM is one such includes a sports center. In Troyes, there is an international multi-sport complex called La Cime, which combines climbing and para sport that was recently completed. So those are sustainable sports facilities that promote heritage, visibility, and community spirit. It's important because people with disabilities must be able to access changing rooms, amenities, fields of play and practice areas, not forgetting the bleachers, the grandstands. They should be able to take on all the social roles associated with sports. To conclude, Marie-Amélie Le Fur, I believe that the president of the French Paralympic Sports Committee is going to be uh, looking closely at the results of the French team. 54 medals in Tokyo is twice as much as in Rio. Is this a good uh, benchmark? We're setting the bar higher for next year. Resources have been implemented by the federations, the athletes who have received enhanced support from the government during their preparation. A lot of work has gone into enhancing our home advantage, and we're hoping for a few more medals, or perhaps not in the same proportions as the upsurge between Rio and Tokyo, because the number of medals double between those two editions, but we're hoping for gold in many events. Our objective will be to double the number of gold medals between Tokyo and Paris, to give France a little more weight in the ranking of nations, and also maximize media exposure for the French team. That way we can get the strong message across that it is possible to play sports when you have a disability. It's a strong message to the country that people with disabilities are not disabled, just differently abled. Also, we need to make it fun for our athletes. And at the end of the day, there's nothing more fun than winning a medal. And we'll uh, meet together for these Paralympic Games on the 28th of August 2024 with an opening ceremony on the Place de la Concorde and on the Champs-Élysées. Thank you very much, Marie-Amélie Le Fur, for being our guest, the guest of France 24 and RFI.